This is Job Express, victory of the cause of freedom is every day. Six long years of war, Winston Churchill declared the end of fighting in Europe. It was the 8th of May, 1945, Victory in Europe Day. Welcome to this special program marking the 75th anniversary of VE Day when Nazi Germany surrendered to Allied forces and the Second World War in Europe was declared over. At 11 o'clock precisely, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall will lead a national moment of remembrance from Balmoral to pay tribute to heroes of the past and present. This was Trafalgar Square in central London 75 years ago after the long, hard years of war. The nation was ready to celebrate. Thousands of people poured onto the Mall. We want the King, they called out from the railings of Buckingham Palace. The royal family appeared on the palace balcony not once, but eight times that day to greet the crowds. And they were joined later by the Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, as the nation came together to celebrate victory in Europe. Well, our today's commemorations are far cry from what was planned before coronavirus, but despite that, the royal family is still very much at the heart of it. Yes, and it is, I think, what the royal family does best, really, representing the entire nation and the commonwealth of nations, a symbol of unity, a symbol of resolve at a time of challenge, of thankfulness, at a time of commemoration. And, of course, in the Queen, in Queen Elizabeth, we have a direct link to this day, 75 years ago, there she was, as we saw a moment ago, on the balcony of Buckingham Palace alongside her father, King George VI, and Winston Churchill. And there is, Sophie, the added poignancy of remembrance, which has taken on this even sharper significance at the moment with all the losses of the pandemic. So we recall a day 75 years ago when the nation, many nations, emerged from the war in Europe, when Britain had suffered nearly half a million casualties, uh, when the veterans of that generation, of course, are having to be isolated.
on this cloudless day over the White Cliffs of Dover. Iconic aircrafts, such symbols of Britain's fight for survival against the Nazis and of the RAF's superiority. Tonight, the Queen will give her message to the nation. Yes, an address to the nation from the Queen at the very time, 9 o'clock uh, British time tonight, when her father, King George VI, broadcast uh, to the nation. And the Prince of Wales laying his wreath at Balmoral, strangely representative, really, of uh, this day, in that, that there are no great national acts of commemoration. Commemoration, remembrance, lies in the heart. So begin today's events to commemorate VE Day, to thank the World War II generation for their service and sacrifice during those wartime years. Given the current crisis we are living through now, paying tribute to them seems all the more poignant. World War II, and as Britain faced its darkest hour, Always keep your gas mask handy. Never go out without it. The nation pulled together like never before. Don't be alarmed. Keep a good heart. 80 years on, and we're facing our greatest peacetime crisis. The way ahead is hard, and many lives will be lost. Coronavirus has brought grief to some, financial hardship to many, and an unprecedented change to us all. Together we can beat this and we can make a difference. Thank you everyone, thank you, all the key you, workers and the NHS, we love you all. <laughs> now, as we did in World War II, we're uniting in a common endeavour. It's that little seed of, of kindness in everybody that seems to be really growing and, and blossoming amongst the community and it, it, it's a wonderful thing. Finding a way to protect ourselves and those around us. I love you. God bless you while every day our frontline workers are saving lives. This is amazing. This is I can't tell you how amazing this is. These are our finest hours. Today, as we remember VE Day, we pay tribute to heroes old and new. They're superhuman. Yeah. They are, they're actually are super human. The ordinary people, proud to do their bit. People that say it's awesome what you're doing, you're a hero, but I'm not, it's just my job. This is just a part of my job that I never expected to do, really. And the lengths people are going to, to help others. This is my city, and if I can make it easier for at least one family every day, yeah. It's going to keep me going, even if it's 365 days before we uh, get out of this. Through it all, local BBC reporters were capturing the spirit of the nation. Satnam Rana, BBC Midlands Today. Lisa Summers reporting Scotland. Edward Salt, BBC South Today in Totten. Keeping a remarkable record of how people have responded in towns and cities across the UK. Women's voluntary services form a true cross-section of British life. On railway stations, their green and maroon dress is well known to the forces. On some stations, they have a permanent canteen ready to serve any soldier passing through. They're... In World War II, soldiers were fighting on the front line. Today, our forces were playing a different role, supporting the NHS. In all of my more than 40 years of service, this is the single greatest logistic challenge that I've come across. Everywhere, people were rising to that challenge and helping in any way they could. One group from Lancashire was glad of the chance to give something back. Eunice Muller reports. Jihad Haji Rashid arrived in Preston four years ago as part of the government's resettlement scheme for vulnerable Syrian refugees. A professional tailor, he's making scrubs free of charge for the Royal Preston and Chorlian South Ribble hospitals through a network of 300 volunteers. When I came here, he gave me the life, he gave me the safe, he gave me a good future for my children and the Syrian refugees. So now it's my turn. To, to, to give him back for the NHS and the government and the British people. 
We have so many young men who are eligible to work, who are so willing to work, but it's really hard to get into the job market. Um, so it's been a fantastic opportunity in a crisis, really, for a lot of these young men to show their talents and show what they can do. Lana works for the NHS and is involved in the East Meets West group that helps elderly people meet women from different cultures. Her husband Bashar has recently started volunteering. Furloughed by Lancaster University, the IT technician is fixing laptops and giving support to parents who are homeschooling. They support me here in Lancaster. Now I have to give something back. Yeah. In England, as in the rest of the civilized world, Christmas has always been the day when the family comes home. Now sons and fathers are fighting in the air, on the sea, in countries far away. The war will not stop, even for Christmas Eve. World War II affected every aspect of life including religious celebrations. Today, as the holy month of Ramadan began, celebrations were again disrupted. This Ramadan, many Muslims who serve their country in the NHS and in the armed forces, and in so many other ways, will not be sharing the joy of this month as they normally do. I want to say to all British Muslims, thank you for staying at home. Normally, two million Muslims travel to Mecca during Ramadan. This year, it was deserted. Instead, families like the Naims from Brentwood in Essex found a new way to celebrate. Debbie Tubby reports. It is three o'clock in the morning. We have to finish eating by four o'clock. Sidra Naim is with her two sons and her husband, who's a doctor, eating at their home in Brentwood before fasting starts at sunrise. The world is definitely more united at the moment because this virus has affected everybody, no matter what class we are, what creed we are, what colour we are, what religion we are. Everybody is all in the same boat. As the mosque is closed, they listen to the call to prayer on the radio, continuing to pray five times a day, turning their home into a temporary mosque. Ramadan lasts a month, fasting from dawn to dusk, abstaining from food, water, smoking and sex. Is that is the call to prayer. So that has told us it's now time to open our fast. We're definitely connected more with God this year because everybody's praying to God to get rid of this virus. They hope the end of Ramadan, marked with the festival of Eid, coincides with the end of the lockdown. If not, they'll continue to adapt. In Gloucester, one member of the Muslim community was using his time of fasting to make sure others were fed. How are you? This is the 36th day straight that Hash Norat has been collecting food from his community to give to the shelters who help the homeless and the vulnerable. It is Ramadan. You don't think of that when it comes to the work. This is my city. And if I can make it easier for at least one family every day, yeah, it's going to keep me going, even if it's 365 days before we... Uh, Get out of this. This has been baked by a lady called Mo. She's an angel. Hash has delivered 2,000 meals since the crisis started, and when he can, takes treats to those he calls the real heroes. Really appreciate it. It allows me to see the most important people on the front line who are looking after us smiling, and that allows me to smile and I think uh, sleep well at night as well. Across Britain, people have encouraged each other to stay safe. Look out, boys! A crashing shot and a glorious goal! Hey! Now, boys, it was Kirchin who scored that goal, but the credit belongs not only to him, but to every member of the team. Each of those boys out there was thinking not of himself, but of the team as a whole. That's right, Mr. Harrison. That's what I'm always telling these kids. They must play as a team. Yes, and don't forget in this war we're fighting today, we must all play for the team. 
Today, with the Prime Minister now back at work, the nation's resolve was starting to have a real impact. We are coming now to the end of the first phase of this conflict. And in spite of all the suffering, we have so nearly succeeded. By now, more than two million people worldwide had been infected with coronavirus. Here in the UK, protecting NHS frontline workers had become a national priority. Printing a lifesaver. Modern technology, skilled engineers and kind hearts all coming together to help protect lives on the medical front line. These machines at the University of Hull normally help students with coursework. Now engineers here are using them to make thousands of desperately needed face visors being used by NHS staff at the city's hospitals. Everybody involved in it was really keen to get involved because we, we sort of see what's going on and we can see that as engineers and manufacturing industries we can contribute to this. This is what, this is what we're about, this is where we, we sort of belong. One of the aspects we've tried to address is to make it more comfortable for the wearers so that they can wear this important piece of protective equipment without it hindering their very important day-to-day -day rules that they might be doing. It, there's no profit being made here, it's all at cost. For us, we get photos sent of the nurses and everybody wearing them, and that's quite uplifting, but it's also a bit of a reality check that the people are so happy to receive these because it is the difference between being able to treat their patients or having to stand back. The London Marathon was among the many sporting events to be cancelled, but that didn't mean charities missed out altogether. During the lockdown, charities are suffering. They need our help more than ever. And this is just our little bit as a street to keep the fundraising going for such a great charity. Everywhere, people did whatever they could to raise money. 10 laps of Coventry Airfield was the target for medics from the Warwickshire and Northamptonshire Air Ambulance. Victoria Darnell from Chelmsford ran 26 miles around her back garden. Not everyone can manage a marathon, but many were still doing their best to keep fit and to help others do the same. My name is Rajinder Singh. I'm 73 and I'm the skipping Sikh. I try skipping because you can do inside and outside. Rajinder's allotment usually serves as his gym, but now he's branching out online. The Gurdwara has asked him to record an exercise video so those isolated at home can follow his example. So what's the skipping Sikh's advice to all of us? Health is wealth. Do little exercise, step by step. No need to be a bodybuilder. I request everybody stay home, do exercise, eat sensible, don't get upset. All over the UK, people were saying thank you to those helping to keep them safe. Our hard-working NHS staff risking their life to save our people, the community. This is the time that we do something for them. Families once happily united have been scattered by the war. But here's the first big organized visit of reunion, and the parents are naturally taking a lot of presents with them. And when they arrive, what a reunion. Many of these divided families haven't seen each other since the war began, so now they have a really wonderful time. Families reunited at the end of World War II. 80 years on, we're hoping for an end to this national tragedy. And so I can confirm today that for the first time, we are past the peak of this disease. We're past the peak and we're on the downward slope. Communities have once again united in the face of adversity. And there have been some small glimmers of hope This terrible crisis is far from over. It's a tragedy that has inflicted grief on thousands of families. But as we remember VE Day, 
we must also recognise the spirit of communities up and down the UK who have responded in these dark hours with such strength, resilience and determination.